Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how I overcame hoarding magic cards. I made a video about how I just have a huge collection of magic cards. I am trying to close on a home. Chase is giving me headaches right now because they just don't really know what they're doing. But hopefully everything being said and done, I can close on a home relatively soon. And I'll show you my magic collection, which I'll move from storage. I have solved the hoarding problem and the solution was quite simple. Uh, it was just not to buy anything. Like, I just don't have the tendency. It used to be, I'd be like, oh, okay, Calidas, I'll buy two cases of that and I'll just not open it and put it in my storage unit and not look at it. I am over that um, mainly because, I, I, again, I don't want to reiterate this because a lot of people get upset, but I don't buy as much from that store anymore that I used to buy a lot from. I don't even buy fat packs from the store. I have not opened a booster pop box or a fat pack or anything on this channel for Kaladesh. Have you guys noticed that? I have not. And you can see at Eldritch Moon, we didn't do the pre-release. Normally at pre-releases, we open like a lot of stuff because why not? That's like the best time to open it. And then after pre-release is over, I open the rest of my stuff. Uh, most times not on camera because you guys have want to see it that weekend. But for the most part, I have stopped doing that and it just does, it feels really good. Um, you save a ton of money. So partially, A, I had to save money for my home, like in source, and uh, I'm not gonna go into like chase mortgage like requirements because that's kind of boring. But yeah, you do need like X amount of money in your bank account and they, they have to you know, see that you're not buying so much magic cards, I guess, would be the way I put it. Um, so I mean, they have access to your financials and your statements. So that was number one. I went and clean up my financials. Um, and take less, you know, large chunks of cash out to pay the magic cards because then Chase would be like, hey, what happened to this cash, et cetera, et cetera. Secondly, uh, Pokemon Go. I have spent quite a bit of money on Pokemon Go and I love it. I think it's a fun game. I have uh, not, I this is real embarrassing when I tell like my non-magic friends, but I've canceled my gym membership to the Go Gym, which is like right next to Walmart next to, it's like, 15 minutes away, so it's a nice gym because I can go there whenever. And I cashed with that one to buy Pokemon coins. <laughs> and the cancellation fuel was devastating. Like, I was like, wow, it costs this much to cash hmm. So, uh, Pokemon Go, the fact that I'm moving and I have to clean up my financials a little bit, which I'll get into a little later, and just the fact the store, I'm not happy with the store. I'm just not. Like if the store were to treat me like any regular customer. So I think what happens is I bought so much from this one store, they got accustomed to treating me poorly. And it sounds ridiculous when I say this, but that's what happened. Like, I don't know what happened, but um, I got yelled at by the Magic the Gathering tournament organizer. And it's like, dude, I'm a customer. Um, you know, I'm not surprised at all they don't have any turnout for FNM. I'm not surprised at all. Not when that dude's yelling at everyone. Um, and it's a great community. Like I went to game day and I met the players um, who normally play there and, and they're real nice guys and everyone's friendly and um, it's a good place. I like it, I like it. But you know, when you have a tournament organizer who's not professional and who's yelling at customers uh, who are just trying to buy stuff, how, that's really upsetting and I'm not going to keep putting money into someone like that. I'm not, I mean, it's just not happening. Um, so that is primarily the solution I have to hoarding is just buy, not buying things. I have not bought Legacy in a very long time because I'm afraid of counterfeits. I will openly say that. I do not want to deal with counterfeits with Legacy cards. And people say, oh, it's so obvious that they're counterfeits. <laughs> you need to see some of these counterfeits because it is not obvious and you need a loop. They feel right, they don't smell. Like just, people say, oh, smell test doesn't work. But like, remember, this, these cards are just being printed. So they do smell differently because they smell like plastic or cardboard or whatever they smell like, because they're fresh. Like, it, what are the odds that someone trading you a near mint uh, underground sea and they have a near mint tropical and they have near mint volcanic and they're all pack fresh. That doesn't even matter. Like, even if a card's been in a boost pack of 15 years, 16 years, I don't, like 20 years, it's not gonna smell like it just came off the print, right? 
because it's been stuck in a booster pack in storage for 25 years or 20 years. So hey, that's a little rant and maybe I'll make a video about counterfeits a little later, but I am I did not buy any legacy, I'm not buying I did not buy Caldas, I did not buy Eldric Moon that much, and I don't intend to buy Aether Revolt. I'm going to buy Commander 2016, but I'm just going to buy the decks I want, and that's it. Uh, for the most part, I didn't buy Conspiracy 2, I didn't buy Eternal Masters that much, and that's why you haven't seen pack openings, because I'm solving my hoarding problem by not buying stuff. Because I just don't sell enough to justify me buying that much. Anyway, bye guys.